obviously the evaluation of the summer league and any other opportunities that come up to continue to do what we can to, you know, balance and improve the roster if those opportunities are there. But we're happy with a lot of the guys that are coming in uh, from Minnesota, and uh, I think they all can contribute in some way. Um, so uh, we'll see how it goes. But it's it's kind of we're in the middle of it right now. I guess simple. Why did you trade Rudy Gobert? So, look, Rudy was a obviously an unbelievable cornerstone for our franchise for a long time. Um, coming here in Utah when he was 21 as a as he says, a kid from France. And uh, I've had a chance to watch him grow from the very beginning and a uh, really special part of our franchise. Um, look, some of these opportunities that come up are hard, but uh, given the amount of return and how motivated Minnesota was, um, it was just something that we all had to get together as a group and decide, hey, this is something that we need to do for the organization. Um, also putting Rudy in a very competitive situation, which I think he deserved if those opportunities come up. And um, it was a group decision, and uh, we move on from there. How, um, what's the, the urge that you know, Donovan has to, to, to frankly lead this team um, next season? I think it's a great opportunity for him. Um, obviously, he's a high character, highly motivated uh, player who wants to be great. We're going to continue to give him resources to do that and accomplish it. He's a driven young man. And uh, that opportunity for him to assume a leadership role, which he's continued to grow into, um, along with all of our other players and veterans there, with with Mike and Boyan and the guys that he's been with to help him. And uh, I think the new guys can come in and help him with that too, both on and off the court. Is there a possibility that Donovan would be traded, or is he considered untouchable in the Look. If you had asked me, you know, three months ago about anybody on the roster or any sort of change, change is inevitable in the NBA. Um, I'm not trying to be cryptic or anything else, but um, Donovan's on our roster and, and he's a very, very important part of what we're trying to do. So, um, you know, things evolve in the NBA. So I, I couldn't sit here and say, you know, anybody is, you know, we're, we're trying to build a championship team. but. There's no intent there at all. Were you guys surprised by the amount of return that you got for Rudy just in terms of the, the volume of, of draft assets and the volume of, of players you got in return? I mean, Leandro was a former first-round pick. Walker was a first-round pick this season. Um, Malik Beasley, you know, he, we know what he can do offensively. Obviously, Patrick Beverly and, and, and Jared Vanderbilt has been, they've been starters. They were starters on the playoff team. So were you surprised, or was that kind of the intent to kind of get that kind of return um, when, when you guys started pondering this? Um, I would say this, Tony, that there are only, there are very few players in the NBA that do the things that Rudy does. And Minnesota evaluated their own roster and made their decisions of that he would accomplish a lot of the things that they were trying to get done as they try to move forward. Um, but it's not like the, you know, Rudy's grow on trees where you can go and find them. So if there was an opportunity, they knew that they had to be, I, I don't want to speak for them, but they obviously were very, very aggressive in trying to add Rudy to uh, their team. And for us, we valued him very, very highly. And then it got to a point where, you know, what they, what we ended up you know, as an offer from Minnesota to receive that we had to sit together and say, okay, this is, this is in the best interest of the organization. What's your approach with the free agents that were on the team last year that, you know, Wancho, uh, Eric, and Trent, that you continue to have conversation with them or uh, looking at other directions? Yeah, I, I, we certainly haven't closed the book on, on anyone. All three of those players uh, made good contributions for us. I think it's just Is that the, Bo Cruz you mean you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Bo Cruz. Uh, that's a good one, JP. Um, but free agency is a is a process, and you have to just get through. You know, take care of some of the other major things we have to first. And like I said, we have a couple open roster spots right now, so we'll get through that. We'll get through summer league, and then try to, you know, finish up the rest of the roster. But by no means have we closed the book on 
on any of those guys. How do you deal with um, the, um, the, the crowded guard room, as, as we should say? <laughs> um, all of them are at varying levels of their career, and all of them, I think, have shown to be NBA players. Uh, many of them, you know, top starters and rotational players on playoff teams. And, you know, a couple guys that have great potential and developmental opportunities. So, um, you know, a lot of that is with coach, but also, again, we have other roster spots to sort of balance out the roster that way. So we'll get into it. And coach has had many conversations already with, you know, the guys that are now on our team, both the guys coming from Minnesota and, and our re returnees. So. Uh, we'll help and support him um, as he, you know, builds a staff and builds a program, and I think all of them have opportunities to to help us. You guys have interest in making Donovan a full-time one, you know, and kind of putting him up there and then putting kind of pieces around him, maybe bigger pieces than they might see. I, th I think that's a good question. We have talked about that a lot. Yeah. So I mean, I'm I'm sure he's he's played some one in, uh, last year. Um, a lot of times when Mike was out of the game. Um, so yeah, he'll, I think that he, him evolving more into a one is just going to make him a better player, whether he's the actual full-time one or a part-time one. But yeah, he's been playing some one. Wait, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. No, 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 can we I'm fine. I'm best like six questions. We'll <laughs> <laughs> sure. All right. Well, we may come back to you. So go ahead and uh, go to the Zoom, please, Danny. All right, we'll start with Eric Walden, Salt Lake Tribune. Hey, Justin. Hey, Danny. Uh, just wondering if you could speak a little bit about the guys that uh, you got in return from the Timberwolves, kind of how you view them and what they might be able to bring to the roster going forward if they remain. Sure. Um, Patrick Beverly, longtime NBA um, antagonist, um, brings great defensive fire and something that intensity uh, you know, is needed uh, with our team, and he's shown it over a number of years. Uh, Malik Beasley, you know, both Patrick and then Malik Beasley have both been rotational players on a playoff team. Malik's got a had a very good career, either starting or coming off the bench, and a very, very good offensive player. Um, we're excited about Walker Kessler, who, you know, as a first-round pick and a, and a center who put up some really good numbers. Uh, both offensively and defensively for a top program in Auburn. And so we're excited to get him into our developmental program. Uh, Jared Vanderbilt, you know, high energy, um, defensive minded foreman that I th think has some upside to continue to develop in our program. Um, but he plays hard and, and uh, cares about his teammates. So we're excited to, to have him. And then Leandro, um, you know, as a former first round pick and him getting settled here in the United States, um, he's big, he can play multiple positions, can handle the ball. Uh, we're hoping to, you know, integrate him here in Summer League um, now that the trade's official. So we're excited to kind of evaluate him and get him on a developmental path as well. Tim McMahon, the SBI. Hey guys. Uh, when we asked Don at, at the end of the season about whether he might be seeking a trade, he basically said he needed a week or so to think about it. Hadn't heard from him since then. I uh, was wondering what messaging you've gotten from him or from his representatives regarding how he feels about his place with the Jazz now and, and moving into the future. Well, with all of our players, Tim, it's good to see you, by the way. Um, you, you followed our, our team quite a bit, but with all of our players and all the th possible transactions that we do, we always solicit input, whether it's with coach or, or uh, possibilities of change on the roster. And, you know, Donovan's been very supportive of all of the things that we're doing. He has a previous relationship with Coach Hardy as well from Team USA. So we've been in contact with both him and his representatives, kind of keeping him up to date, and we'll continue to do so. Anything else? Anyone else on Zoom? No, I appreciate it. Good to see you too, Jay-Z. We can go one more question in the room or two more questions in the room. All right, go ahead, Tony. And then. Does, do the, um, how much flexibility, should I say, do the draft assets give you heading into now and, and you know, towards the near future and the, and the far future? 
So, you know, so many of those assets are pushed back, are pushed into the future. Um, you know, some of them are coming up, you know, in the next year's draft. What it does, Tony, is allows you to have a lot of very interesting conversations um, with teams calling because of just the flexibility that you have. So you have a chance to talk about different concepts or deals both now and, and you know, really for the next five or six years. Uh, that, and our, our goal is to continue to add primary players and uh, build a base that uh, has a chance to be competitive and win a title down the road. So those assets allow you different pathways to, to accomplish that, whether you're selecting or you're moving those picks on for, for uh, other players. The season wasn't very much fun this year. <clears throat> the draft wasn't very much fun. Free agency wasn't very much fun. We were over the, over the tax, no draft picks, and our team lo loses in the first round. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't fun um, for us. Um, but that doesn't mean you know, we want it to be fun for our fans and for our players. And, um, but we just haven't had m much flexibility to do anything uh, over the last little while. You, it, one of the things Rudy said in his interview was, kind of was asked why he thought he was traded, and he said, you know, he kind of thought that the win now window was coming to a close for the Jazz. And I guess A, do you agree with that? And B, do you think you can be a contending team next season, or kind of where do you see uh, the direction of this team going in short term? So I agree with that. I don't know if Justin agrees with I that. I agree. Um, we've talked about those things a lot, but um, I think. I don't know. You know, like it, we'll be able to talk more when we have our team together and our final roster is put together. I'll be able to answer the second part of your question more. I honestly don't know. Just, there's a lot to be determined. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just to add on to it, Andy, we're, we're in the middle of it. So, you know, our goal is to put the most competitive roster possible together, but also keeping the long term in mind of building something that can grow. And, you know, credit to. Ryan Smith and the ownership group of giving us opportunities the last three years, three seasons, to really spend and give ourselves a shot. And, um, you know, the team fell short. We fell short. So we need to recalibrate and, you know, try to go and open up the next window. Um, and hopefully it's a long one, but we've got work to do to, to start that. And the timing of the trade, um you know, as it's just finalizing now, it's been tough it's, as free agency has gone. Now we have a little bit of money to spend, although not very much, but it's been, um, you know, we missed out on that opportunity as the trade took a while to get done. I guess I'm now in my third to last question. <laughs> over, the, over the buzzer, but uh, do you want to use kind of the mid-level that you have, or, you know, do, are you still looking at it? Are you guys at 10.5? Yeah, so it just it just depends, you know, what what's available. Yeah. I mean, we would for sure if it, if that player that we thought was going to make a difference, we would use it.